In this video, I'd like to explain how addressing works in a Vista alarm panel. In case you're wondering why you need to know about addressing, let's take a look at some short excerpts out of some of my previous videos. The first video we'll look at was installing your original 6160 control panel. Okay, got a brand new panel, brand new alarm panel on a brand new Vista 20. Plug the battery in. Battery's plugged in, no change. Okay, let's apply power to the panel. That's all you're gonna get. Your first problem. Oops. Nope, you didn't do anything wrong. What you have here is a problem with computer addressing. I'll explain this graphic in detail in the next video, but today I'll tell you enough to get up and running. The next video we'll look at was installing a fancy graphical user interface panel. The control panel will go through a series of self-tests. Then this screen pops up asking for an address. Now, assuming you only have one graphical user interface control panel, address 1 is correct. Select OK. And finally, the more complicated process of installing a second 6160 control panel. Go to your first keypad, hold the 1 and 3 keys down for a few seconds. The keypad will come back and say the current address for this one is 16. Now here's the pad I'm trying to install. It's shipped as address number 31. 31 is what they call non-addressable. As near as I can tell from my research, this was used on older keypads that were hardwired to a particular address. The good So as you can see, if you want to truly understand how your Vista works, you need to know addressing. So let's take a shot at trying to explain it. Okay, here we have multiple keypads. They are all hooked to the same terminals on the motherboard, and your main processing unit has to figure out who's talking and when. I think I can relate this to a real-world situation that most of you have dealt with already. The motherboard collects large amounts of information from multiple users. This is very much like the post office. The person in charge of the post office is the postmaster general, and the information traveling through the post office comes from houses in the form of letters. If only one house sends a letter to the post office, then the postmaster can find that letter pretty easily. The problem arises when multiple houses send multiple letters to the post office. Now, the postmaster doesn't know which letter came from where. His solution? He created post office boxes. Each house is assigned an individual box. Now, when a letter is found in a box, the postmaster knows exactly where that letter came from. To translate this back into computer talk, we replace the P.O. boxes with addresses. So, each address is a uniquely identified location in the computer's memory. So, each of those addresses will have one and only one keypad writing to that location. This means the Vista 20 can determine exactly which keypad sent it a message. It also works the other way around. The keypad monitors its address, and when the Vista 20 sends something to the address, the keypad knows it's being talked to. So, as a programmer, how do you know which address goes with which keypad? This is where your documentation comes in handy. Go to the programming guide, and you'll find this table in it. This column here lists all components in your alarm system that has a computer in it. These are the components that will need addresses assigned to them. And this column will tell you what those addresses are. And this column describes operational notes related to that address. For example, let's look at address 1. It states automatic if AUI enable field 189 enable for AUI 1. Okay, what does that mean? Well, AUI is advanced user interface. In English, they're talking about your fancy graphics-driven control panels. So by default, automatic means the Vista assumes you're going to have one of these panels connected. The first graphical user interface panel you hook up will be selected to address 1, like we saw in the beginning of this video. If you want to hook up a second graphics panel, its address will be set to 2, and you'll have to set that when you install the panel. Now, according to this list, we can only have two graphic user interface panels. The rest of the keypads will be your standard keypads, and the addresses are shown down here. Keypad number 1 is set to address 16. It is always enabled and cannot be turned off. This is because the Vista assumes this is the keypad you're going to use for your initial installation. So, when you install your first keypad, you have to set it to address 16. I showed you how to do this in the second video in this series. Now, if you want to install additional keypads, this would be keypad 2 through 8. These addresses are not automatically enabled, so it'll require just a little more work. The first thing you have to do is tell the Vista you're installing another keypad. 
I gave detailed instructions on how to do this in a previous video. See the link above. For your second keypad, you'll be entering data into data field 190. The third pad is 191, and etc. For the Vista 20, you need two pieces of information. Which partition will the keypad be controlling? And what kind of sounds do you want that keypad to make? This field is convenient for if you have a keypad in a master bedroom. You can actually suppress the entry exit beeps so you don't wake your loved ones up if you're coming home late. Now change your second keypad to address 17 and you're up and operating. Let's take a look at some of the other devices that require addresses. Address 0 is reserved for RF devices. RF stands for radio frequency. This will be your wireless receivers as well as keypads that have wireless receivers built into them. Address 3 is long range radio. These are devices that use a radio instead of a landline or phone line to communicate with your service provider. Address 4 is for the voice module. I know absolutely nothing about voice modules, so it's best if I not talk about it. Addresses 7 through 11 are for zone expanders. The enabled by note for address 7 states automatic if zone number 9 through 16 is entered as AW type or the relay is assigned. Let's convert that to English. Zones 9 through 16 are the zones that will be used on your first expander module. While setting up the module, you enter star 56 to program the zone. In the input type field, select 2, which will give you AW or aux wired zone. This will automatically enable address 7. So zones 9 through 16 are address 7. 17 through 24 is address 8 for your second expander module. And 25 through 32 should be address 9, but you need to pay attention to these asterisks. What they indicate is the address only applies to the Vista 20P. An older panel like a Vista 15 won't be able to do this. The next set of addresses are for relay modules, 12 through 15. These addresses are activated when you use the star 79 output device programming to set up each relay in the module. I apologize, I haven't had a chance to make a video on how to do this particular programming yet. And speaking of relays, let's move back up to the zone expanders. Earlier we had mentioned that programming any zone as zone type AW will activate that particular address. Well, some zone expanders actually have relays mounted on board them. So even if you don't use the zones in the zone expansion module, using star 79 to program a relay in the module will also activate that module's address. And finally, address 28 is reserved for the 5800TM module. And nope, never touched one of these. Everything we've discussed on this chart is how to activate the address inside the Vista 20 panel. You will, of course, have to activate the address inside the attached computer that you're trying to program for. It could be as easy as this graphical user interface panel, where it pops up and says, Hello, what would you like your address to be? Or it could be more complicated, where you have to push a series of secret keys in order to enter the address. And finally, some systems will actually make you go onto the circuit board and change dip switch settings. The installation manual for that piece of equipment will have tables like this that'll tell you how to set the dip switches. And of course, since we can't have something being too simple, there'll be a little complexity involved in this. For example, the 4229 says address 0, all dip switches are on. Whereas the 5881 module says address 0, set all dip switches to off. This little anomaly is caused by what we call positive logic versus negative logic. And I'll discuss that in my next video. Well, thanks for watching.